Hey everybody, Forever Retro 82 here. We're going to play some really bad arcade games on the SNES uh, that, at least in my opinion, were either bad or didn't live up to the standards or quality that the SNES was able to provide. As many of you know, the Super NES and Genesis were some of the finest platforms in gaming history to this day that is beloved by many to where card collecting is a little bit extreme because of the damn scalpers out there. In fact... I, like I said on my streams and in past videos, I, I now settle for multi-cartridges. And yeah, everyone wants to bitch and complain about the legality of those, but I'm at a point where I just don't give a fuck. You know, who cares? You know, some of these companies won't even get money for the games anyways. And when they, and some of them won't even release them on digital fronts, so they're not going to make any money anyway. But... And I'm not going to get buy it second hand either at fucking $200 a pop. Go fuck yourself. Luckily, this game's not that expensive. But would you want to buy it? Well, I can't make your decisions for you. I'm not that kind of guy. But what I can tell you is this motherfucker will never own this cartridge. For reasons I'm about to show you. This was uh, Pit Fighter, made by Tengen and published by THQ. Because Tengen was not a Nintendo publisher at the time because of a well we all know well if if you guys want more insight on that I would suggest going to the gaming historian and he does a full uh, cover on 10 games that were released on the NES and the legality issues they had with Nintendo uh, he does a much better job than I could explain it but if you guys want me to do a take on it I can I mean like I said I'm always up for suggestions Anyhow, so we're going to play a couple SNES uh, games, and I'm just going to, you know, commentary and see how far I can get in them and see if I can find some enjoyment on some of these games that I loved as a kid but can't stand now. I didn't like this game when it first came out. To me, this was a waste of a rental, and I'm glad I rented it because if I bought this game and this was what I bought after, like, I spent, like, 50, 60 bucks, and this is what I brought home, I would have been fucking ludicrously fucking mad. I'm talking livid to the point where I'd break stuff. And he's like, let's cut the bullshit and get started. Okay, just like the Genesis version, you got your three fighters. You have uh, Buzz, Ty, and Kato. Now, you notice the Genesis version when you pick somebody, or when you pick Kato at least, he goes, yeah! Right? Listen to this. Yeah. Two. I mean, do I really have to say anything? The collision detection is awful. The game looks like complete shit. You know, because the SNES's uh, resolution is not that good. And so you just get slaughtered like a fucking like fucking cattle. I mean, Genesis had continues. Guess what? No continues. That's right. You gotta basically go through this shit show with three continues. And let's let's pick another fighter. It's funny how you just you can select it to where it goes to select your fighter. Do I really want to select my fighter? Actually, no. I have better things I could be doing with my time. But his his uh, growl in the Genesis and arcade version is right. Listen to this. Yeah, not arcade accurate. Not none whatsoever. And sometimes the buttons are very unresponsive. I mean, there are people that actually hate themselves enough to where they actually beat this game. Because they're like, just do the character special moves constantly. And, you know, that's all fine and dandy if you can land a hit. Which, as you can tell, I can't land nothing. It's complete bullshit. So I can just try to mash buttons. I mean, I want to try to at least get to the second fucking... Can't even beat the first opponent. Yeah, this. so this is what you would pay 60 bucks for. All right, let's try to last uh, the kickboxer guy. See, once again. Duh. 
I mean, do I have to say anything? Look at the audience, too. They, they look like they were made with Game Boy sprites. Which is unacceptable. This is Super Nintendo. This was top of the line, quality, arcade greatness. But not this port. I mean, it's, sometimes I wish they would come up with a way to make, uh, like, ROM hack and make this game more playable, I guess. But I don't even think that could save this piece of garbage. I almost beat the Executioner. You gotta like that bass guitar going in the background. Alright, let's try one more time. I got best with Ty. Let me just see if I can get to the second info and then we'll move on. This game is fucking garbage. What the fuck was that? Did you see that? Was he, like, carrying me? Like, I'm... Oh, fuck off. How the hell could they say this was a fucking sellable product? Did they have people playtest this shit and say, Hey, let's, um... You know... They didn't have anyone playtest this and say, Hey, this game is obviously broken. We can't sell this to the fucking consumers. Unless they're a bunch of chodes like that. I mean, fuck them. They, they take us for idiots. Like, okay, well, it's, a, it's obviously a game pit fighter that they know in the arcade. So, let's sell this game to the crowds and... For 60 bucks and and they'll be happy with it because it looks like the arcade. No, it does not look nothing like the arcade. It looks like a Game Boy Color game at best. Or a Super Game Boy Color game. The sad part is, the Game Boy port of this is better. And I may play that in the future. During some, during some kind of Game Boy marathon or... Or stream or something. I mean, you gotta request it, of course. Uh, then that way I know that's what you want. But seriously, this is the absolute worst shit show port that I have played of Pit Fighter. Now, if any of you European... If, if, if I have any, even a European audience or European computer uh, audience fans out there that like the... Because I'm pretty sure this... I, I don't know on the top of my head, but I am pretty sure that this game was made for, like, say, Commodore... Uh, 64 possibly an Amiga there was a uh, 7800 port planned but it was cancelled because the 7800 flopped okay now we're gonna ruin my childhood because this game I ad I adored the next game we're gonna do is something I adored during my youth and now it's unplayable trash and I don't know I kind of wish I could go back in time and smack that kid that I, that has made a purchase of this game because now it's like I pop it in it's unplayable to me now and I guess I was just a kid with low standards but the next game race driving which once again published by Tengen or I'm sorry developed by Tengen published by THQ I fucking love this game as a kid but look at the frame rate it isn't until you go like near top speed that it becomes somewhat playable Okay, and then you can pick, uh, I always pick the auto because I don't like shifting in a game. I just think it's a waste of time. And we'll take a quick look at some of these tracks. This one's just your simple auto, autocross track, which is basically, I mean, look at this frame rate. I mean, this is basically just like a going around in a circle. Now, when I was a kid, I was blown away by this. And the reason why is I'm like, wow, that looks like 3D graphics. It's open, and it looks all dope and shit. This is great. But look at this bloody frame rate. See, when I was a kid, I loved this game. I used to crash and do crazy shit. In fact, if I can find something to crash into, I'll show you why I liked the crashing in this game at the time. God, I like that. It sounds like a drum or one of those big old drums that they hit. Into, like this. I used to love doing this. I love that sound. Thought it was funny. But look at that frame rate, man. I, you know, <laughs> that sound is still kind of funny, though. But I used to do just do stupid shit like that because I thought it was funny as fuck. And believe it or not, I did not play this game in the arcade at first. Okay, well, you've seen that track, so let's go look at the others. 
I mean, honestly, the graphics aren't that bad. It's that horrendous frame rate. And some can blame it on the SNES, but I know the SNES is capable of doing a game like this with better speeds. Okay, this is... To, you can go either the stunt track or just the speedway. Let's go to the stunt track. See if we can hit the cow and make him moo. Damn it, missed him. I'm sorry, can you blame me? The fucking frame rate sucks dick. If you go too fast and you hit that ramp, you'll crash. I should have done that for the lulls, but I didn't. Oh, now this part. Yeah. Now, I've been playing this game way too much. Oh, I went too fast. <laughs> now we're going to crash. Doosh. <laughs> yeah, Alabama. Dukes of Hazard. Fuck. <laughs> Looks like the car farted. Yeah, when you hit a ramp, don't go too fast or you'll crash. I mean, I think that's a given. Yeah, it's real slow and sluggish, and I want to say I'm having a nostalgia trip right now, but I'm not. Got like that smash on. Oh, and the pop-in, that's great, too. I mean, how is a new a gamer from... I mean, unless you were raised around this time, how is a gamer that wants to get into old tech play this? If you want my absolute suggestion, don't. This is awful. And love you gotta love that non non soundtrack. Oh, fuck you! <laughs> I just crashed in, but you can skip the play, re replays too. I like crashing into the fucking semi truck, as you can probably tell. But let's just beat this lap, and we'll go to the super stunt track. If I win, Ti timer runs out, game over. Which I think we're gonna get. No, I don't want extended play. I want to quit this mess. And honestly, that there's a Genesis port, and it's not much better. It's a little faster, if memory serves me. I haven't played it yet, to be honest. I played hard driving, though. Alright, let's take a look at the um, Super Stunt track, which I've never beaten a lap from. So maybe I'll have, you know, maybe during this video I'll have a fucking, uh... I'll be great. <laughs> I doubt it, though. I'll be shite. Guarantee that shit. Watch. You know, there was a unofficial sequel. I mean, it has the hard drive and name, but it was not made by uh, Tengen or anybody that. It was made of uh, Domark, I believe, which is a European developer. They made uh, Race Driving 2 Dri Drive Harder, I believe. That was actually a really good game. I mean, it plays nice and smooth, and it's a lot of fun. And there's even cruise control. Yeah, you, pre you gotta use the number keys if I'm gonna crash. Ah! How the fuck am I... Motherfucker. <laughs> Spinning around making donuts and crashing to the fucking whatever the hell it is. Is that supposed to be a wall? I didn't know walls were green. Yeah, as you can tell, the, the what killed this game was the frame rate. It's just... It's very hard to play. The controls are a little delayed because of the frame rate. And it's just not very fun anymore. Because I remember playing this game in the arcade after I played this port at Little Caesars, that arcade I told you about in my arcade video. And they had it there, and the game played silky smooth, and it was fun. I'm like, man, why can't the SNES version be this good? Ah, fuck, overshot dead <laughs> I don't know that crash sound is still funny to me but the game itself nah this is not the way to go about it yeah wonderful soundtrack 
stock engine sounds. The arcade was like that too. And here's where I die. <laughs> Just stops, game over, and you move on. You don't even bother putting in your name because it doesn't save it. But just for the lulls. There we go. Alright. That's race driving in a nutshell. I bought this game, but I didn't pay full price. I got it used for $5. At the old video store. As a matter of fact, I still own the copy I got from that video store. I bought it because, well, the inner child in me is still a Super NES fan and still wants to give the benefit of the doubt of some of the games I used to play and loved, but now hate. Now, I can't stand this game anymore. I mean, the crash sounds funny, but that's not enough to play a game for. It's a shame, really. Alright, let's, let's look at another one. Okay. This is probably the last one for this video, and then, you know, in the near future I'll do another one. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be like, are you serious? The SNES version of Mortal Kombat? Let me explain when I get to the gameplay. The presentation is stellar. It's really good. It gives you that Mortal Kombat feel. I mean, as soon as you hit the title screen. I mean, that's just right there. I love that. I like that better than the Genesis version where he sounds like a cheap Yamaha keyboard's in the background playing the musical notes. Anyways... problem with this port is, well, first of all, the animation is great. It's better than the Genesis, easily. It has the full frames of animation. But let's pick Johnny Cage. But one thing is, if you notice, the digitized graphics, while they are, they look alright for the SNES, the lower resolution of the system caused them to look a little cartoony than they do digitization. I mean, sure, there are filters and emulators now that can fix this problem. But on top, but to top it off, it just, it just doesn't look right to me. I mean, the Genesis looks so much better in terms of uh, crisp, crispness of the characters. Another problem I have with this port is the delayed controls. They're awful, especially if you're playing a character like Sub Zero, someone that has to press down forward or down back to do a move. Sometimes it doesn't respond properly unless you do it slower than normal. So the Genesis wins in the controller department, easy. Which I pl I plan on doing like a comparison video of those two games in the future. But here here's something else that's a problem. The, the fucking censorship is awful in this game. There's no blood, all sweat. It's ridiculous. They did this because there was a controversy going on of violent video games uh, making us children into violent criminals growing up. Games like this and Doom and... Night Trap. It was just a stupid time with stupid adults making stupid decisions. Now, I th let me see if I can do this real fast. Okay, hold on a second. I'm trying to. I want. I'm trying to prove a point here with this. All right, let's pause it. Okay. Uh, that's not a good frame to be pausing. Uh, hold on. Let me. I apologize. Let's get to the open here. Okay, let's pause it here. Okay, this is the problem I have with the SNES version in the graphics department. Fucking that light sucks. Anyways, look at Raiden, for instance. See how he's outlined? And you see, like, the, 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 like... It doesn't look proper. It doesn't look right. They look like, um... Something you use chroma key on. And maybe they did. Maybe that was what they used for this particular port. Is some kind of chroma key shit. But even the backgrounds, I mean, look at the backgrounds. They, it just, I mean, they're colorful and they look the part, but they look drab. And I think it's because of the resolution. I could be wrong. I mean, anyone is well, well within their right to make it a, 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 a pink, uh, fuck. Tell, if they know more about this than I do, then please tell me in the comment section. I would appreciate that. But yeah, look, just look at this picture right here. It, it just does not look right. Like, the characters look I mean, they're digitized, you can tell that, but they also look cartoony as well. I mean, not to say that they looked great in the original game, but I mean, back then they did, though. I mean, compared to, like, you know, now, and if you compared, like, from now and then, I mean, then this was hardcore technology. I mean, it looked great then, and 
I don't know, it's just the this doesn't look right to me. I mean, but that like look at Johnny Cage. Look at that animation. See see how see what I mean? It just looks off. But you know, that doesn't matter. What matters is the gameplay, of course. Ga if gameplay is paramount and it plays like the source material, that's great. But the only thing that, like I said, with this port is the controls are sloppy. They're very unresponsive, and the unfortunate decision to censor this port. Because I s I can actually see this maybe beating the Genesis, only because I think the blood is the only thing that sold the game. To be honest, I mean, Mortal Kombat's not an in-depth fighter. It's very limited. Okay, I got my ass kicked, but that's besides the point. <laughs> I want my revenge against Raiden, but I'll use my boy to do it. Scorpion. Scorpion's best. Scorpion's my favorite MK character. He always has been. I just, I just like his backstory, and I love his designs he's gone through in the series. It's fantastic. Oh, and the Genesis version of this screwed up. There's two statues representing the ninjas. There's supposed to only be one, and it's and the reason for that was it was supposed to represent uh, both of the ninjas, one statue. But in the Genesis version, there's two. Why? This is one of those things that can't be explained, honestly. Kano is literally the most cheapest son of a bitch in this game, for reals. Now you may, may be thinking, hey, you're playing good. That's because I own this port, I've played this port to death. Because, like I said, I was an SNES fanboy growing up. I didn't appreciate the Genesis. Now this isn't censored. You know, skeletons are fine. A scream by them is fine, but the blood isn't. I don't know, man. Adults make stupid decisions when it comes to arcade ports and things of that nature. So, let's look at one more and we'll call the video. I saved the best one for last because this is a very butchered port of what it could have been if Nintendo wasn't censor happy during this time period because Nintendo was like what Sony is now and what I mean by Sony is Soy boys at Sony because they like to censor everything now but this was a uh, proof of that particular concept uh, with this game this is a very butchered port of the arcade game and this is of course Final Fight as you can see here now problems with this game is well yeah. When you press the start button, the character selects three. Just two characters. You have Mike Hagar and you have Cody. Okay, and good characters, but where's Guy? Oh, that's right. We had to wait until 1994 for them to release a port of Final Fight where you have Hagar and Guy. I'm going to pause this so I can explain some things when it comes to this port and why this is the last game I choose. And I figure it's the best for last for lots of reasons. First of all, censorship. Instead of the chicks, uh, uh, Poison and Ivy, you have Sid and some other, uh, Sid and some other fuckhead, I can't think of his name, because I could care less, because to me, that's not the real characters in the game. No. I know Poison, I know Ivy. They were in the Gen they were in the Sega CD port, because Sega was all about being edgy. They, they wanted to appease and please, uh, people of the source material and arcade fanatics and make sure it's as close to accurate on their hardware as possible. Now, I can't be said for all their ports. Uh, like, for instance, Space Harrier 2 was, a, to me, was complete garbage. Uh, I, I just choose to play Space Harrier on better consoles, uh, 32X, the Saturn, etc. Uh, but this game lacked two players. And the reason for this is because Capcom decided to settle. They want okay. I'm going getting ahead of myself here. Capcom wanted to release this game on the SNES to show the power of the SNES. They wanted to prove it could do arcade perfect ports. I get that. That's perfectly fine. But here's the problem: they had to settle for four megabit chips, or the four megabit chips at the time, which is the release, which was the amount available at the time during release was four megabits because as you know many uh the the uh nes had uh different chip different uh memory mapper chips 
or MMCs, and to make better movement of objects and make the gameplay smoother and less slowdown and the like. I mean, it goes on. I mean, and Konami made their own, um, excuse me, made their own chips as well to to provide almost near arcade experience. I mean, come on, look at this and look at TMNT2 on the NES. You had two extra stages and you had two player co-op. Capcom's decided to, to be lazy and settle for the four megabit, uh, megabit chips where you only had uh, two players to choose from, guys gone, and the industrial zone where you fight Rolento is also gone. Not only that, you have censorship all over the place. This is a very poor port. It plays okay, but the things that made Final Fight just grimy and gritty and awesome is taken out of this game in completely. Now I'm going to play a little bit so you can see that the gameplay is actually okay. <laughs> Sound samples used are okay. They sound just like sounds just like the arcade, just not as clean, obviously. The frame rate's fine. It's there's slowdown, of course, because the SNES was prone to that, unfortunately, with its 3.58 megahertz processor CPU chip. But as you can see, the gameplay is fine. It, it, it controls like it should, and it's fun to play, but see, the thing about games like these, they should be co-op. Co-op is is what made beat-em-ups back then so much fun. You and a buddy just put it in quarters and beating the living snot out of fucking NPCs. Or enemies, or dickheads, whatever you want to call them. Oh, and here's another thing. There's no transition. It just fades to black and goes to the next screen. Yeah. I'll, I'll go ahead and finish the stage here, since I can do that and while I talk. Um, And the thing is, is in Japan, they released uh, something called Final Fight Guy. And Final Fight Guy was, once again, Final Fight, again, for the SNES. But instead of Cody, you had Guy, no two-player mode, and no industrial uh, zone either. So, they, and there's no excuse for that, because 1994, they were all the way up to 32 megabits. They were just being what I like to call lazy calm. That's what I call Capcom even today, with, with their, all these stupid remakes they're doing. I call them lazy calm. They're lazy. They didn't want to do, they didn't want to do the fan service that they claim to provide. They're like, oh, we do fan service. We give the we give the fans what they want. Yeah, that's why you didn't release an arcade mode for Street Fighter V until fans bitched about that. You don't care about the fans. You're fucking with them. You just want their money, and that's that. It's a business, yes, but give the customers what they want out of their purchase. Now, here's one of the ones that are supposed to be Foxy or Rocky, Roxy. Or, I'm sorry, not Foxy. I don't know why I keep saying that. It's Poison and Ivy. Now it's Sid. I forgot the other dude's name. I could care less, though, because... They... God, they remind me of, like, Saints... Like, kids... Like, dudes you'd see on Saved by the Bell. This, some people bitch about the silent design. I think it's okay. Oh, and yeah, here we go. He's supposed to be damned. He's called Thrasher in this game. I mean, there's so many censored points in this game that it takes what Final Fight was known for and what made it an awesome beat-em-up into a pile of junk. I mean, it's playable and it's fun, I guess, but it just takes out all the things that we loved about Final Fight. Honestly, the best home port you're going to buy for your money is the Sega CD port, easily. Or if you can afford the arcade version, get that. Or one of Capcom's collections for the Xbox or PS2. Which I own. I own the I own the PS2 ports because I own a PS2. I don't own the original Xbox. So there's that. I mean, to me, there's really no difference other than loading times. And Thrasher's done. So if if the lack of two-player mode, not having the industrial zone where you fight Rolento, the censorship doesn't bother you. Then th then this port's fine. 
But if those things bother you, which it bothers a lot of gamers, including myself, because that's not what I liked about Final Fight. What was cool about Final Fight was you had uh, you had three different characters with different personalities and cool designs. You had you know under tit shots when you beat the shit out of the chicks. Oh, well, that's another reason why they censored the girls in here. It's not because of their under tit shots. It's because they don't want to uh, push violence on women. It's like come the fuck on, guys. Where it's a video game, not real life. There's a difference between the two. But they like to fucking push political issues in the game front. And they're doing that more so today than they ever have at any time that I can remember. I mean, yeah, there was a conspiracy with some violence in video games. But at the same time today, it's like, oh, like with MK11. Yeah, no nudity. And everyone's like, oh, uh, MK was not all about girls in skimpy outfits. Bullshit. There's two things men like, and I can speak for one because I am a man, all right? I like I like titties, and I like skimpy gir girls in skimpy outfits, and I like seeing gore. And if that's all combined into one game, beautiful, wonderful, that's how it should be. But no, we got NPCs and fucking people who don't even play video games fucking shitting on our parade. So, you know, we need to find a way to stop these cucks, and we need to stop giving the left power. I I'm sorry to be all political, but it's got to be said. You people are giving the left power. Too much power. Take it away from them. Let's grab our shit back. Let's make shit like this so this shit don't repeat. History is repeating itself, goddammit. We need to stop it now. Stop being cowards and pussies. Speak up your mind. Fight these fuckers. We can beat them. You just gotta learn to fight. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed that little rant. I had to get that out there. I am Forever Retreated 2. What were your least favorite SNES ports? Or what's your least favorite port at all for the SNES or even the Genesis? You know, the comment section there for a reason. So please, feel free to speak your mind in any way you feel right. Um, or your opinion, you know, whatever. That's what it's there for. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, so, with that being said, I'm out. So, <laughs> I don't know, let me know what you think in the comments below as always. And thank you for watching my video that I am Forever Retro 82. And we'll see you on the next one. Keep loving, keep gaming, and keep it retro. Have a good one. Thank you for watching my video. I'd like to take a moment to thank my Patreons for supporting me on my channel. If you'd like to support me as well, I have a link in the description. And just throw me a couple bucks. And if you want to see your name up on the wall of these fine people, I will add you right up there with them on my next video. Until the next one, guys, take good care of yourselves, and we'll see you on the next one.